Hello citizens of the internet, my name is AJ, I am the A2Z artist. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if this is your first time visiting. There are a lot of nerdy videos here, so if you enjoy nerd culture or animated movies or comic books or anything of the sort, you're in the right place. Uh, today we are doing something kind of fun and something a little bit outside my wheelhouse. Um, I talked about in a past video how much I appreciate fan art and how much I think it is important to the growth of any artist. Um, essentially, if you like a thing, you're going to put your passion into that thing, no matter what you're doing with it. So you're going to put your passion and creativity 100% into that thing you are making. With that said, I really don't do a lot of just pure fan art, where I just, I do a full illustration with characters I love. I do some challenges and stuff with characters I love. I've done the ABC challenge on here. I've done a few genre swaps and stuff, but not very many like full just compositions illustrations of my favorite characters and i decided to change that this week um today we are going to be drawing part one of a rise of the guardians piece um that's right one of dreamworks uh, lost gems uh, huge community but i still think it's a little underrated i don't think it's one of dreamworks most well-known movies especially with compared to shrek or how to train your dragon um but I still th love this movie, and I wanted to do a fan art piece of it, mostly because um, I was inspired by Patrick Brown. Um, Patrick Brown is kind of a professional fan artist. Um, he has a class on Skillshare called Characters in the Scene. I'm not sponsored by Skillshare. I said this in a past video, but I just love that class. I love their classes in general, and Patrick Brown's work largely focuses around the properties that he really loves. He does these really, really intricate illustrations, um, that are just very high energy, high motion, and um, this class talks about his process and talks about the importance of fan art and his just career in general. Um, and that got me inspired to do my own piece of fan art. And by popular demand, by my dad, who I sent my dad a list of five different properties, uh, and he picked Rise of the Guardians out of the group because he loves movies as much as I do. So um, I decided to do this piece today, and uh, it is part one. I decided to just focus on the inking and I'm doing a total of like a dozen characters in this piece, so I decided that might be, inking might be enough to fill my time for this video. So, um, with that said, if you like this video, leave a thumbs up down below. Um, subscribe if you like my channel, I got a lot of nerdy art videos like this. Um, and comment down below if you like this artwork, if you like The Rise of the Guardians, if you don't like either. And I also have a question of the week at the end of the video. But yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. My drawing process this time, you can see from just the starting point of this video, is a little rougher than a lot of my other ones. I started out with my general like new process for just working digitally. Uh, I started with a traditional sketch of the pose I want. The problem was I relied a little bit too much on that original pose. I didn't think about the pr proportions. I just kind of sketched out the gesture of the pose I wanted and then just threw some anatomy on top of it, which is okay. Um, it, got some interesting poses and I got probably three or four of my favorite poses that I've ever drawn, but it also got some real duds. Uh, my Jack um, Jack Frost from Rise of the Guardians is not was originally not my favorite, which is why you can see me redrawing his entire pose um, there in the middle of this drawing process because I just felt like I could do his character a lot better uh, and make him a little more playful and interesting and um, make him look younger because I made him look way too like superhero tough. Kind of a Punisher style character, not an actual fun Jack Frost character. Uh, basically my process was the same as it was last time. I, was, I imported the traditional sketch pose into the program and then I drew over the top the details that I wanted to add in um, to the overall illustration. I think that worked out really well this time and besides the hiccups I had earlier, um, it was just a lot of fun to do this art process. I mean, like I said, I love this movie. Uh, Rise of the Guardians for me is probably one of my all-time favorite animated films. Um, just the holiday aspect, like incorporating the superhero story with these holiday characters, the Easter Bunny, you got Santa Claus, Jack Frost, the Tooth Fairy, Sandman, uh, you got all these really interesting characters and you got them in a superhero setting. It's kind of a, the ultimate genre swap in a way. Um, and it, it works just it works better than it should, I think. Um, it, but yeah, it's just 
outside of that really fun idea, it's just it's such a heartfelt story too. Um, Jack Frost's journey to kind of, of self discovery, um, especially now having graduated from college and trying to kind of find my place in the world and find out what I want to do with my life outside of uh, college um, in the big bad real world. Um, I kind of it, it really kind of resonates with me, and so I'm I'm glad. Um, for this story to kind of see that, gen that journey to find the center of the character. Um, plus, it's just good storytelling in general. I mean, trying to find that personal element of a character is just... Digging deep and finding that center of a character is so important for any writer or storyteller. Um, beyond all that, it's just a good movie. It's just, it's well written. It's The animation is spectacular. Um, I especially love the effects on Sandman. Um, Sandy is just such a cool character because his character is so busy. There's just so much sand swirling around him at all times and stuff coming out of him to, to create a character like that and animate him regularly. I mean, it had to have been just a process to try and get all that sand animated on a regular basis and making it seem realistic. And they did such a cool job making that effect. So the movie's just fantastically beautiful. It's just a great story. Um, I highly recommend it if you haven't seen it. I think most of us are still kind of isolating ourselves to an extent. So, uh, yeah, it, now's the perfect time to get yourself into a movie. Um, you might find an obsession like me. Anyway, I also kind of wanted to share as we're getting into some of the inking um, sections here, uh, I wanted to kind of share some tips for my work with, when I'm digitally inking. Um, I, I struggle a lot with digital inking, and so I'm not a perfect teacher for this aspect, but I always like to bring up just my process and what I'm thinking. Um, and for the most part, I try and do a very kind of loose comic booky feel. I mean, for the most part, comic books a lot of times have that very spot black, um, Marvel, DC kind of comic style. And my style is more probably influenced by manga and stuff like that, where it's a little looser, a little more open. Um, I do a lot of my kind of detail work in the rendering. With that said, there are a few things I've kind of picked up as I've worked over and over again on my inks and stuff. And for the most part, that's what this video is going to focus on, other than the drawing aspect. is just the rest of the video is just me inking. I didn't uh, include any colors in this piece because I haven't done the colors yet. Um, so kind of the first tip I wanted to mention is uh, varying your pen size. That's the one thing that I, as even a traditional artist when I was taking classes, um, I struggled with because one of the big issues is... It can look really flat if you just use one pen size. With digital, you a lot of times can get a pen tablet or something that'll let you vary the pen size as you're with pressure, so it looks more realistic in that sense, and so you can get a variation that way. But it still helps to just physically vary your pen size on the menus and stuff because it allows for you to just create more energy in your piece. Um, I didn't do a hugely great job in this. Um, I'm going to do another pass with a thicker, darker brush um, throughout the entire piece around the outlines of the characters to create a more interesting silhouette and let certain characters come forward. Because the darker a piece is, the more in shadow it's going to look, but also um, the more forward it's going to come. If it's really, really thickly outlined, it's going to come more forward because just our, that's how our brains work. Um, that's how our brains interpret that. So yeah, point two is zooming in. Um, if you want smooth lines, um, and you don't need smooth lines, uh, contrary to popular opinion, you don't need super smooth lines all the time. If you want super smooth lines though, zooming in is kind of key because it allows you the chance to really kind of use your whole arm to get these really th fluid lines. Um, otherwise, you're kind of, you have to go a really a lot longer distance and that gives more room for your hand to shake and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, zooming in helps. It's not great for video quality. I'm sorry about that, but that's just my inking process. 
usually I'm zooming past this part so I don't think about it. Um, and another one is if you do want smooth lines is if you have to just do the line over and over again. If you're zoomed in you want to go over the line and if you don't like it undo it or erase it and then do it again and again and again until you get the line you want. I don't do that as much in this piece especially and I don't do it a huge amount in general, especially if I'm doing fur or like a feather texture or something. Um, it just seems to look better if I'm not doing super smooth lines. Most would probably disagree with me on that point, but you know, like I said, it's personal preference. I like um, just kind of the scratchier, thinner lines that way. Um, but I also incorporate some smooth lines in there too, just to kind of vary the texture of what I'm working on. Um, and as I said, aspect is you don't need the super perfect lines. And I gave two tips on how to get smooth lines and uh, fluid looking line work in your pieces, but you don't need those for your work. I mean, some styles really don't work well for it. If you want more of a sketchy kind of look to your pieces, sometimes maybe you want those scratchy line work, sketchy styles. Um, it's totally based on the piece you're working on, totally based on what your personal style is. Don't be afraid of trying out the fluid lines. Um, go right ahead. That's your choice as an artist. Um, not everybody has to do the same thing. And I have to be very plain on that. Not everybody has to do the same thing. Because then you get a bunch of art that looks just flat and boring. Because the entire museum looks like one person did all the work. So yeah, we're kind of coming up to the end of this drawing process. Um, like I said, I didn't film Sandman by accident. Um, I kind of feel bad about that because he is kind of my favorite character from the movie. But um, I'm going to have to play around a little bit with his inks anyway because some of his compositions not working super well with this piece. But overall, I'm happy with the inks. Um, and it's kind of getting to the outro. I'll show you the final piece is what it is so far. And see you later. So that was part one of my Rise of the Guardians uh, fan art piece. I, so like I said, I decided to do a part one because this was taking a long time. I did, did about a dozen characters in total for this artwork. Um, so I wanted to really kind of put my time into just the varying aspects. And I thought it would be kind of a fun exploration of my style for the channel. Um, next week I'm going to be finishing up the piece, going to be doing some of the effects. I'll be altering some of the inks just to a place I'm happier with. But... Uh, and getting the colors and renders done, getting a background in there. Um, so expect all that for next week. Uh, part two is coming soon. Um, but that's it for today's video. So uh, my question of the week, what is your favorite animated movie? Um, as I said, Rise of the Guardians is up there. Kubo and the Two Strings is probably very close, although that one is more, since it's claymation, I don't know if it counts for this. Um, it's a different type of animation, so I don't know if it fits my kind of bill. And then for 2D animation, it's probably Treasure Planet. I think that's probably my favorite just 2D animated film in general. And probably one of my favorite Disney films of all time. Um, but let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are. Um, like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Be safe, be kind, and have a little fun this week. Bye! So if you are drawing it, you're going to put your entire passion into making that thing the best thing you can make it.